Uh, welcome to the Q&A of the competition entry Essential Truths of the Lake by Lev Diaz. It is a pleasure to have here at the table with us tonight the director, writer, editor and co-cinematographer Lev Diaz, the actor John Lloyd Cruz, the actress Shaina Magdayao, the actor the actress, assistant director, and production manager, Hazel Orencio. Wow. <laughs> the producers, Bradley Liu and Bianca Balbuena. <laughs> and the co-producers, Jean-Christophe Simon and Joaquim Sapinho. Love this morning. It's always an experience, uh, not just the character, the, the whole thing. Um, we're all fil filmmakers in the set, you know, direct. Yeah. So you get to have that privilege. You get to be part of his uh, intention. So, yeah. And uh, regarding the character, it's it's surprising in, in political cinema, but especially in the context of something as uh, like the Duterte's drug war to see a representation of a sympathetic policeman or a, rather a sympathetic representation of a policeman. And I was wondering why was it important to bring in this nuance towards this character? Uh, it's, it's, it's also important to look at the other side of this uh, entity, the police. There are so many good policemen. I was a bit uh, reporter when I was young. So I was assigned to so many, you know, beat stations where I, I just reported, you know, petty crimes in the country. And there are so many good policemen. There are bad policemen, but there's always that, you know. So I want to show that side as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the worst policeman was, of course, Duterte. <laughs> and previous to him, Marcos, of course. Mm -hmm. Well, that's true with uh, what John Lloyd said. Um, I always say that um, he is like a mentor, but also um, he gives you enough freedom to be a collaborator. He gives you freedom, but also respects your space as an artist. Since um, I watched about every movie of you, and I really feel that you really want to change the minds of the Philippine people. You really want to change them and give them a broader sight and. and yeah, and, and tell them that they should learn more and stuff mm. like this. What was your feeling in the last election? Uh, wasn't it a big, big uh, punch, you know, in your stomach? Of when you course, see that yeah. the son of Marcos is now the, yeah. the big president, course, yeah. that must... I would think, when, when I read yeah. in the news, I was thinking, what would Lafti has say? <laughs> it would say, oi, what's happening? <laughs> what would you say, Bianca? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a big, it's a big, uh, you know, debacle, truly a big debacle in our culture to go back to that abyss, you know. Just the, just the fact that we have the Marcos as back in power again is something, it says a lot about us, Filipinos, how we, you know, we just lie to this, you know, abyss of, you know, just being retrogressive, you know, and just going backwards, you know. It's this wall of ignorance that's eating us up. So it's a problem. It's a big embarrassment to have the Marcos is back. You know. I mean, it's like in the scene in the movie when you were um, stating that uh, the Duterte regime was putting back the, Fil the Philippines years and years and years. Yeah. How much more with Marcos now? <laughs> the Marcos is back is a, yeah. the result of. Duterte is rehabilitating them. Yeah, he was rehabil He's part of that, you know. Yeah, he, he lies on the hills. He put them back in power, you know. And that, then, yeah. that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Marcos is lying now in the Hibble Cemetery. That's, that's yeah, insane. Yeah, yeah. That's in totally insane. It will take years and years to, yeah. for us, for the Filipinos all to regenerate after the Duterte regime. It's yeah. just six years, but it's hundreds, hundreds of years of going back to the abyss. Yeah, it's so nothingness it's, for us. Yeah. yeah, it's really a shame. Yeah. But he was he is really controlling the minds with TikTok, yeah, social that's media. That's the populist way. Things. You have Trump, you have Assad, yeah. you have Putin, you have all these motherfuckers. Yes, that's the right word. Yeah. <laughs> What's there? But it's you know, populism is with us. So maybe, maybe 
we can do something about it as well, you know. Mm. Let's rethink our way of dealing with this kind of ideologies, you know. Mm. So it's, it's more of understanding history again. Why? We always go back to this. You know, we slide and slide. Maybe there's something there. We should examine it. That's why we should confront history always. Yeah. Yeah. It should be always dialectical in a way. We examine it. Maybe we are wrong in how we perceive things. Or in how, in the praxis of changing things, maybe there's something wrong there. Yeah. Can I say something? Yeah. Um, we are also struggling to show when the waves are gone in the Philippines because um, our country is instilled or run by fear. Um, so a lot of the cinemas don't want to be involved in showing when the waves are gone, which was released a few months after the election, right, in Venice. Um, so all the more, we, but you know, this, this restriction, I would say, makes us value the cinema of love more because it's a cinema, of, as I've always said, it's a cinema of resistance. And especially now that we are in a country or in a world run by fear, we need to resist. And this is what we keep, why we keep working with love, because he reminds us of what we're fighting for. Um, just, you just present something for this course. Like in cinema, we know that we can't do much. It's just a very small part of the greater discourse. Mm -hmm. In culture, it, it is that. You just put a responsible word, and maybe it can create something, a more Socratic way of doing it. It will be there, and people at some point will react, and they will be affected, and they can do some reactions to it, or some inputs on how to do things the better way. Yeah. Like this one is being uh, uh, um, accepted at home in the Philippines, and if uh, there are no censors from the government or or how are the uh, common peoples taking it in? Uh, do you, is it being shown free, freely at home in the Philippines, or are there no, censors? I, I, I hate to mic grab, but go ahead. Okay. One of the reasons why... Ma'am, are you a Filipino? Yes. Oh, glad to meet you, ma'am. It oh, just happened very recently. Yeah, very recently. Uh, one of the reasons why I, I jumped... Uh, not I jumped from the plane, but... I jumped to my flight is because... Uh, one of the earlier collaborations with it... Uh, was supposed to be like an opening film of a local festival back home. But then... Um, I well to put it bluntly, they they got afraid of of uh, all the congressmen giving them funds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we did a beautiful film called Servando Magdamag, written by none other than Ricky Lee, a national artist back home. And <laughs> I don't know what I don't know how to process it. But it's it's uh, this local festival is connected to the cultural center of the Philippines. Cultural and center of the Philippines. I, uh, you do the math, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> the censor they, they, they pulled, pulled it as the opening film because they were afraid they won't get the money, the funding for the next edition of the festival. So it's it's sad that it's happening in the very cultural center of the Philippines. So you know, it's, it is like that. It is, it's very hard to find venues in the country where we can show the films. Because it's, it's, the cinemas are controlled by some syndicate. It's just sharing the films. Because we don't have the venue. We don't, we don't have a support from the system. Yeah. Even from, you know, cultural institutions, like the cultural center of the Philippines. It's, it's hard. Yeah. No, we cannot show them. They, they want Batman, Superman, and Oppenheimer. <laughs> Well, when, when the waves are gone, the previous film that went to Venice, it was screened in a local cinema film festival called Q Cinema, which we really appreciated because they were very brave to show it, especially we were naming names in that previous film. Um, so we're hoping to show this film again in the same festival in October. The default was like, oh, you make all those films for, the, for Europe and for the festivals. But they don't check that our system is so faulty. We don't have theaters to show the films. The system is not helping us. 
It's very hard to show the films. There are more than 200 Filipino films every year. And so many good films from young people. And we cannot show them in theaters, in cinemas. It's only the festivals, the film festivals abroad. And they fault us like, oh, you make films for the festivals abroad. No, we cannot show them here in the country. There's no help. Can I just add that how crazy it is that the film When the Waves Are Gone, the previous film that we did, is going to be shown in theaters in France, but we haven't shown it in theaters in our own country, and the film is supposed to be for our countrymen. So that's really sad.